Hey guys, it's Bucky Dore and get ready to test another night with Dirt Track Speedway. Our final test if all things goes well. And you can see Trip the Dog Door and hanging out in the background. He's not a very happy camper right now. It has nothing to do with me. Mother Nature's a little bit uh, on his bad side because it's been raining. And so his little cubby hole in the back, that's where our shop dog hangs out and hides. And so Trip the Dog Door and going to hopefully not be a big part of the show tonight as we get ready to go and uh, test things out with one final run with Dirt Track Speedway. I will let you know that there is uh, some stuff coming up tonight we're going to talk about here as we get our, this is our hot lap session, kind of previewing what's going to be taking place on tonight's broadcast. And with tonight, we're going to be talking a little bit about upcoming events. Uh, during our heat races, though, the hot shoes, is that's when we're going to be taking a look at some of the drivers who have, uh, well, been doing pretty well uh, to get the, this past weekend rolling. We'll talk about a few of those guys. Our LCQs, your last chance to kind of plan your weekend we'll take a look at some of the specials also in the we're going to do an extra session as well with uh, opening nights for weekly racing tracks as well and how many tracks there are in Iowa we have got to count ourselves blessed tonight's main event going to be talking about the start finish line maybe not necessarily where you think it is an interesting thing I saw over the weekend we'll talk a little bit about that and then finally my victory lane speech I finally was able to finally put that story together about the perfect night of racing. Now, there wasn't a common thread, but there was a common thought that did come out about that. So thank you for everybody checking in. Troy Belmer, hey, Troy, thank you for checking in with tonight and tonight's edition of Dirt Track Racing. All right, so we're going to get things started with our heat races here tonight. Tony Paris checking in. So the heat races, I want to talk about some of the hot shoes that uh, this past weekend I saw. Give a big shout-out to Jay Schmidt, who had a solid Frostbuster weekend in the IMCA Stock Car class. No worse than a top three. On Friday night, he finished second at Marshalltown. Saturday night, Boone, he got third and finally got the win in a Survivor Series with uh, the Benton County Speedway edition of Frostbuster. He took the win there and a wild finish in that stock car field. Feature. Also, modified driver Johnny Scott. Now, despite his 10th place finish he got at the Boone Speedway on Saturday night, he bookended the weekend with a win on Friday at Marshalltown and then another survivor night uh, being at the right place at the right time and was able to capitalize and took the win on Sunday during the uh, Benton County Speedway version of the Frostbuster. Shout out also to Tyler Soppy, the hot shoe that was challenging Tony Olson for the IMCA Northern Sport Mod National Championship last year, picked up right where he left off. I think it's his fourth win. Got two, uh, two uh, leading into this weekend. I got two this weekend. Davenport Speedway won, and then uh, one on Sunday night at the Benton County Speedway, the final night of the Frostbuster. Also, I want to give a shout out to Jeremy Davis. Had a nice little write-up. There's a couple of different stories in there, but if you go to the Cedar Rapids Gazette website, thegazette.com, Jeremy Davis has a nice little write-up about Tyler Soppy and how he picked up right where he left off and has talked a little bit and got a few quotes with uh, uh, Soppy as well. So check it out at thegazette.com. Com. After winning Saturday night's IMCA Dairy Brothers Summer Series race at the uh, West Liberty Raceway, it was kind of a heavy-hearted night. Denny Eckridge took the time to remember uh, a, a great racing friend to a lot of people, in especially eastern, central eastern Iowa, as Mike Murphy was killed in a car accident earlier or uh, last week. And quote from an IMCA press release, he helped me get into a black diamond chassis, Eckridge said. He helped a lot of racers. Mike was a good guy, and he died too soon. There are a lot of heavy hearts tonight. So salute to Mike Murphy and all the fans and friends, and Godspeed along the way. Our Tough Luck Award for the weekend has to go to uh, hobby stock driver August Bach. I saw it on two occasions. I'll be honest, I couldn't find a stat on Friday night, but on Saturday night, battling for the lead, right rear goes down at the Independence Motor Speedway. Was announcing for IMCA TV on the Frostbuster. Again, finding himself battling for the lead, and what happens? Right rear goes down. So I will say the hard luck award for the weekend has to go to August Bach. And I'll be honest with you, at least August has a sense of humor about it. I found this on his Facebook page today. It says, I think this weekend I'm going to try Elmer's glue to hold my right rear tire on after a long, deep thinking session I feel this is the answer. <laughs> so, August, at least you have a good sense of humor about the whole thing, and I appreciate it, man. It was good to talk to you again this past weekend. So, up next on our Dirt Track Speedway show, we're going to take a look at the upcoming events. Uh, these are the ones that I'm aware of, and I might have missed some, and I apologize right away. 
Ah, yes, Jerry. Thank you very much. Jerry checking in and reminding me, Tyler, stop. I do remember reading that now that you say that. Lost the clutch while leading at Liberty. So thank you, Jerry. I appreciate that as well. All right, so the upcoming events this weekend, uh, the Crawford County Speedway over in Denison is going to have two nights. The first night of the Spring Fling is on Friday night. Davenport Speedway is going to have a, a combined Corn Belt Clash Mars late model race. And the Dairy Brothers Summer Series will be visiting uh, the uh, Farley Speedway. And I'll talk a little bit more about the Farley Speedway during our AIM main conversation a little bit. On Saturday night, the 34 Raceway, I believe it is a combination again of the Corn Belt Clash and the Mars Series that'll be at 34 Raceway for the annual Slocum 50. The second night of the Spring Fling will be going on at Crawford County Speedway. The Independence Motor Speedway has the Dairy Brothers Summer Series. They also have a 1000 to win for the Modifieds with a $30 entry fee, and that's another Fast Chefs All-Star Invitational Qualifying event. And to round out the specials for this weekend, the West Liberty Raceway also has a Fast Chefs All-Star Invitational Qualifying event. Their Modified Extravaganza pays 1200 to win for the Modifieds. That is on Saturday night. Uh, Tony, you're jumping the gun there a little bit, but yes, you are correct. So I want to take a look at uh, some of the upcoming events as far as opening nights for the tracks. Now, there are 25 different tracks in the state of Iowa. So if anybody ever says, I don't have any racing options, well, then you're awful picky. Uh, here's uh, the list of the 25 tracks that I'm aware of that are going to be running weekly. Wednesday night, you can see the Buena Vista Raceway is not going to start till uh, May 31st. Southern Iowa Speedway gets started next Wednesday. And CJ Speedway uh, actually is going to be kicking off this weekend. And you can see the list. It's the Crawford County Speedway May 5th, Davenport on the 21st, Farley also on the 21st, Fayette County, Hancock County also on the 21st, Lee County on the 14th, Marshalltown on the 14th, and Rapid Speedway is going to be starting on uh, the 28th. Now, our Saturday night tracks, there are plenty of them. 34 Raceway, they've got the special this week, so they're next week. Adams County already got started with their weekly points as well as Bloomfield. Now, Bloomfield switching time back and forth between Bloomfield and Eldon, and I can't find an Eldon Speedway. Uh, website or a Facebook in there so maybe Tony you can give me a link uh, to help me out and keep track of that I know the schedule I just don't know of any news or updates Hamilton County Speedway gets started this weekend Independent still has a couple more specials before they start their first point night on the 29th Knoxville Raceway the sprint cars get going this weekend Makokota uh, in a couple of weeks Shelby County on the 29th and Upper Iowa and West Liberty on the 22nd and then Sunday the Benton County Speedway will start their points this weekend Dubuque has us uh, Deary Brothers next weekend and then they'll start on the 30th and then Mason City Motor Speedway gets started on May 7th for their weekly racing so tonight with our A main conversation that I wanted to talk about, it was something I saw on, uh, I believe it was Instagram, there was a picture of two cars at this checkered flag, at the flag stand, and there was one car on the bottom that was slightly ahead of the other, and the guy that was ahead was actually declared second. Now, it was on a page where they didn't credit who the photographer was, so I didn't want to go, I didn't know who to go get permission for, and if you're not getting permission to use these pictures, you're just saving and posting it, by the way, you're violating copyright, and... Good luck to you. Hopefully, the photographers are nice and not going to come after you. I know, at least in, in our world, in the radio world, that we've been getting sued. Our company has, there's a couple of stations that have had to pay a 50 or a five-digit and even six-digit fine. So be careful when you're starting to take those pictures and who you're taking them from. Anyway, so I got to thinking about that. So what took place? Now, I don't know the particular incidents that the score and whatnot, but I'm going to guess that that has to have something to do with it. It's more common than you think that the flag stand and the finish line aren't synchronized. I know when I uh, worked at the Benton County Speedway, there's a light pole just right before I think it is the flag stand, and that was actually the line that we used when I worked there, which is about 15 feet or so in front of the flag stand. And I know there's other tracks as well. When we were, uh, Chris Marchese and I were working the Northeast Iowa Mod Tour, we were up at Cresco Speedway an awful lot. And you can see in the picture here, the flag stand was about 50 feet before the actual start finish line. Now, I think they have moved it since then. I don't quite remember, uh, but you can tell that it is just a little bit off. So something to think about. Also, the one that always made me kind of chuckle the most was the one at the Highway 3 Raceway, unfortunately no longer running that I'm aware of, but it was like 100, 150 feet between the flag stand and the actual scoring stand. We had to put a cone and told them in the driver's meeting every time to remember that, that the finish line really isn't the checkered flag. You've got to go another 150, 200 feet to it. So it's just something to think about when you have a photo finish and you don't necessarily agree with what you see or... 
maybe not necessarily what you agree on a restarting lineup as well. So my victory lane tonight going to be talking about the article that I was working on with uh, different fans. My goal with uh, this show, as we continue to do another test tonight, thanks for those that have been logging in and checking it out. Uh, yeah, the flag stand is now the start finish line. Thank you, Paul. Uh, you were flagging the last time I knew up there, so thank you, Paul. I appreciate that. That's at the Cresco Speedway. So anyway, one of the goals that I have with this show isn't necessarily to make it a highlight show, make it a video highlight show, uh, driver interview. My goal is, is there's uh, different aspects with dirt track racing. There's the drivers, there's the fans, there's the track officials and promoters, and there's also the media as well. And all of us got to work together. And all of us, when we go to the track, we have a different expectation of what a perfect night is. So that lead me into wanting to talk about the different perfect nights, opinions from those four different groups. I decided to pick the fans first. And I talked to about 50 different fans and I got about 300 different answers on what made the perfect night. And it should be no surprise that the number one answer was car count. But it wasn't the only answer I got, but it was definitely the number one answer that I got as far as what makes the perfect night. So Becky Sennett uh, from Ankeny said, car count, I love to see more cars for a better feature race. Dustin Mangrich out of Gilbertville said, I, I would say car count. I love to see a good group of cars. Having an A and a B main means we're going to have a great night of racing. Competition and drama, they're equally important. That's what Rick Reeder said to me. Uh, but I think car count is probably the most important. More cars equal more fans. And the track makes money and stays open. So that's awesome. Uh, but it wasn't the only choice that I, uh, I, I received. Uh, Kevin Lenz, uh, he goes all over the place and sees all kinds of different things. And heritage of the event or the track was one of the things that he thought was most important to him. Uh, if I've been to that event before or I've heard about an event that has, a, that has had success, I, uh, I would be more inclined to go there. Joe Hayes, former race director in Eastern Iowa, said, quality of cars, I would say. I'm still a late model fan and love to watch them compete. Now, personally, I'm one of those that thinks uh, the racing surface is the most important to me. I don't care if the track's a little bit rough or choppy or whatnot, as long as there's racing, side-by-side -side racing. What's the point of having 100 cars if you see three passes all night? Not much. So that was kind of the spin on the drive. To cipher through all of that, that's kind of the main gist of what I got. There really wasn't a common thread, though, with the fans that said, this is the one thing that I think makes the perfect night. We may agree on a lot of those things and the points that I just pointed out, you may agree on though as well, but there was a common theme that kind of come about, about as far as the future of dirt track racing. Evolution is one of those, I would say, and better fan amenities. So I've got a video here that I've uh, found. Thank you to Bob Moyer out of Dubuque. He's a pilot and flew over the Farley Speedway. Now, if you look, this is, uh, uh, this actually, this area right here is actually the old turn three and four with the wall now being gone on the half mile. They've made the wall now go with uh, just the three and four. And the goal, I don't know where they're at in the process right now, but the pit area here, no more. All the pitting is going to be off of uh, the back stretch, And I believe the uh, fill area will come into off of where turns three and four used to be over in Bob's flying at the same time and doing his phone, so I'm, I'm glad he's more concerned about the, the level of the plane, the yaw, and whatnot. But over here will be extra overflow as well. Now, I'm not sure exactly where they're at in that process, but it will be interesting to see because now all of a sudden turn three is going to have a normal entry. But again, they've done, uh, the, the new Farley Promotions group has done a great job to try to invest back into uh, dirt track racing. Uh, Mark Berglund out of uh, Shell Rock uh, said... Uh, one of the themes that I talked about or haven't talked about yet was the negativity that seems to come out about racing. Everyone seems to be bold and proud and allowed. In fact, I saw a series of threads this weekend where the F word was used more than other words to describe a situation. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't really care for it. So I just skipped over it. But then there was another one. And then there was another one. And then there was a number one. So most of you know that uh, uh, I did step away for a little bit, and that had a little to do with it. I'll get into more with that. But the negativity definitely had something to do with it. Yes, I believe the negative buzz can affect people that might be thinking of giving uh, a, a, a track or a race a shot. Also, sometimes, yes, it might uh, change my mind, said Kevin Lenz on a track, but I still try to support it no matter what. And a lot of the people that I did talk to says, even though there is the negative buzz, and sometimes they're just having some fun and people misinterpolate the situation, it just gets all out of hand. And to be honest with you, we become an oversensitive society, so it tends to create 
friction and anger and everybody starts getting on each other. So be aware of that when you're out there having fun and, and when people start poking in and before you start poking in, make sure you realize, hey, is this just two people having fun? I know I just saw Brett Ladahoff uh, showing up. He's watching in there. He's one of those that likes to have a good time. I don't think he necessarily means to, but man, I tell you what, if you just read it and know Brett, he's having a good time with it. But you can, I can understand where somebody might misinterpolate it. Now, I did say that I did step away for a little bit, and that was mainly, I'll be honest with you, so I could spend time with my kid before he started his college career. Uh, <clears throat> uh, I still love the sport, but uh, uh, I'll be honest with you, the constant I'm smarter than you are and louder than you are rants on social media and also eventually in my face at the racetrack made it a very easy decision to spend more time with my kid. Now, it wasn't because I had hurt feelings. I'm pretty thick-skinned and pretty cold-hearted, I guess I've been told in, in the workforce. Uh, it wasn't because I hated the sport. Uh, to be honest with you, I still love the sport. It just grew tiring to see it on Facebook all the time, and, uh, and then it would explode over onto the onto the track and then suddenly people started to become superstars with the attitude and all of a sudden we had a bunch of grown men doing sword fights all over the place at the racetrack on social media and whatnot and it just grew tiresome so i decided let's step away and then just see if i miss the sport and actually i ended up did missing an awful lot of it so while all of a sudden my resurgence back into the dirt track lifestyle, well, my son is going to be going to college, so I'm going to have free time. So maybe I'm an empty nester a little bit, but also I'm hoping that, uh, the, that I can cut through the noise and, and make uh, the positive things show back up again about dirt track racing. It's going to take a little bit of work. And just like we expect the racetracks to adjust, we adjust, uh, expect the sanctioning bodies to adjust. We also expect the media and how they cover to adjust. We as fans have to be able to adjust as well. If you're going to sit there and say, you need to change, I'm perfect. Well, more power to you and good luck in that glass house. So that is my rant for the night. <laughs> I do apologize if I uh, went a little bit overboard on it, but I just want to make sure that we find the fun things again and understand that sometimes when you see something that's negative on Facebook, it isn't necessarily something negative. It's just some people having fun. I don't know if you've ever been to the pit area, uh, my son's getting a, a whole new education as he's coming with me to the races and the conversations that his dad has with some of the racers. It's a little different in the pit area. It's a very guy oriented world. And sometimes with social media, it spills over. Got to understand that. And then you have to explain it to him. And so on the way home, he was like, yeah, I get it. All right. Of course, he's probably 18 now and smarter than I give him credit for. So speaking of giving credit, I want to say thank you to a few people for helping me with tonight. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, this is our last test. And there's a new Facebook page called Dirt Track Speedway. If you go to Facebook.com slash Dirt Track Speedway, give it a like because that's where these shows are going to be taking place now. It's going to be on there and they'll be archived as well. Uh, they'll be also uploaded to a YouTube channel in case you want to check it out or share it with your friends and whatnot. That's uh uh, very fine with me. Uh, I want to say thank you to Bob Moyer for letting me, giving me permission to use that video that I, I, I showed earlier. Also want to thank Becky, Dustin, Rick, Kevin, Scott, Joe, Ryan, Wes, and Mark for allowing me to quote them in an article. And if you want to read that article about the fans, uh, you can go to K985.com right now. It's the top story in the feed right there. And I'll share it out a little bit uh, in the comment section here with this as well. Uh, also, I'll uh, put it on my uh, Facebook page as well. Casey Albright, check it in. People in the stands need to understand what racers and crews go through. Absolutely. Uh, Brett Ladahoff, bring back RaceRPM.com. <laughs> uh, actually, there has been a little bit of talk about something like that. I did actually, one of the things I was tested down in Memphis, Missouri, was something along those lines again, part of those live update guys deal. But uh, uh, there's IMCA TV, there's Speed Shift TV, Dirt on Dirt. There's a ton of other already out there covering it. And I do not want to step on their toes as well, but maybe there's a few events. Maybe we can do some live quasi things from the speedways from time to time, maybe getting a little behind the scenes as well. Hang around here. Uh, sorry I'm late, Bucky. Ryan, don't worry about it. Uh, just a little bit. This thing will load back up on my wall. And if, for those that are just tuning in, again, I want to remind you that uh, this will be the last time I do it on my personal wall. Go to Facebook.com slash Dirt Track Speedway and give that page a like right now because this is where all those videos are going to be. Again, the show isn't about highlights. It isn't about results. It's about 
What's going on in the world? The hot button things. We talked about the victory lane or the, the, the start finish line. Something I see over the weekend. We'll talk about it. We'll talk to the racers. We'll talk to the fans. Up next, I plan to talk to track officials and promoters on what they think the perfect night of racing is. So that's kind of my goal with Dirt Track Speedway. Again, thank you guys for checking in. I love every one of you for checking in and having a great time. And if you want to feedback as well, you can hit me up on personal message on Facebook or you can post a comment here and I'll do my best to get back to you again. So thank you very much for joining me tonight for the final test edition of Dirt Track Speedway.